sana. So today we are going to talk about uh, a lumbar puncture. So basically we are going to go through some mosque stations then uh, just do a literature review. But these ones after the literature review then that will be all. Okay so the questions are uh, that, an, uh, that a newly diagnosed HIV infected uh, 40 year old male patient presents to A and D with history of headaches, fever for two months and the relevant history of convulsions. So you are requested to perform the shown procedure. Then describe the step step by describe the technique step by step for performing it. That's it, Max. Then list N4 contraindications to performing this. Okay. Then the next uh, station, the next uh, station, or an addition station on on the same uh, same uh, topic, is uh, you have two two positions which we, uh, in which we can do a lumbar puncture. So you have the lying position and the sitting position. So the question one, question A was saying, list the indications for the procedure in the picture to max. Then what are the contraindications for the procedure? Six marks. Then what are the anatomical landmarks for consideration? Okay, so in terms of uh, answering the first part, so describe how you would go about performing procedures. So of course, you gather the equipment. Then, uh, then after gathering the equipment, you definitely have to we definitely have to monitor you have to, you, after you gather the equipment you have to wash hands introduce yourself name and row then confirm the confirm patient's uh, name and date of birth explain what the procedure will involve gain consent to perform a lumbar puncture then ask the patient if they have any pain before before continuing with the procedure then you have to position the patient. So like in the uh, picture which was above, there were two positions. So position A, if the patient is able to sit, then they can thus, they can sit upright and cross their hands and stretch their legs and flex their neck. Then position B is, if, is when if the patient is unable to sit or is unconscious, then they have to lie or you have to make them lie in a lateral position with their knees flexed to the chest. Then after putting the patient in position, you have to palpate for the superior, posterior crests, uh, on uh, meaning the left and the right superior, posterior crests. Then you have to make your fingers meet in a straight line. Then where they are going to meet, that's most likely where L5 is. Then, then you have to palpate in between the L3 to L4 or L5 to L, to L4 to L5. Then you can even mark that area or you can even just uh, not to say, okay, this is where my mark is. So especially with experience, you can even just do without marking. Okay. Then you have to clean with uh, savlon in a circular motion, then iodine in a circular motion, and then finally methylated spirit in a circular motion. Then you have to use the spinal needle or needle from a cannula, especially if you are in a limited resource press. Then you have to inject it until it is in an angle pointing toward the umbilicus or when, when injecting it make sure it is in an angle pointing toward the umbilicus then also you should watch out for the back flow okay then after you are in the after you are in now in the subarachnoid space containing the csf when it's coming out you have to measure the opening pressure with a manometer then you collect the csf in at least four to five different portals for lab analysis okay so if you don't have the manometer then it's fine you can just go ahead especially if you are in a uh, low set uh, in a low resource uh, setup then you have to measure the closing pressure as well then you remove the spinal needle slowly then cover the puncture site with gauze then tell the patient to rest for at least some time before moving then thank the patient then for the layers the needle will, part, will go through so the mnemonic is uh, three S iridas, so meaning there are three S. Then I A I E E I L E D A S. So skin, superficial fascia, supraspinous ligament, 
interspinous ligament, ligamentum flavum, epidural space containing the, vet the intervertebral venous plexus, you have the dura mater, arachnoid, and the subarachnoid space containing CSF. Okay. Then indications for spinal indications for rumbar puncture, we have diagnostic and therapeutic indications. Then under diagnostic, we have CSF analysis in meningitis, encephalitis, neurosyphilis, meningoencephalitis, TB meningitis, Gurren Bear syndrome, and of course these are not the only indications. Okay. Then therapeutic, you can have spinal epidural, spinal medications, and also fluid removal for relief. But don't do it if the intracranial pressure is uh, increased. Okay. Then uh, in terms of contraindications, you can have infection at the site, thrombocytopenia of less than 80. Also, other people can even just mention coagulopathy. Okay. Then... Uh, Spinal def uh, deformities such as uh, scoliosis, kyphosis, and of course increased ICP is a contraindication. So that's why you can't do it if it's uh, increased. Okay. Then complications, you can have brain hematoma, brain ignition, Cushing uh, syndrome, severe headache or migraine, hemorrhage, introduction of infection, and of course uh, brain abscess. Then CSF analysis results. So the CSF analysis results. The normal one is usually in terms of appearance, it's clear. Opening pressure is 90 to 180. The WBC is less than 8. Then proteins is in milligrams per deciliter is 15 to 45. Then glucose is 50 to 80. Then if it's bacterial meningitis, it is usually tepid, elevated, and the, in terms, the opening pressure is elevated. The WBC count is more than 1,000 to 2,000. Then proteins is more than 200. Then glucose is less than 40. Then for viral meningitis, it's usually clear. And the opening pressure is usually normal. Then WBC is less than um, 300. But there is lymphocystic predominance. Then proteins are less than 200. Then glucose normal. Then for fungal meningitis, the appearance is clear. Opening pressure is normal to elevated. The WBC is less than 500. Protein is more than 200. Then glucose is normal to low. Okay, then if they were to ask about TB meningitis, so TB meningitis in terms of appearance, it has a cobweb appearance. So that's all. On, that's all I wanted to share on the lumbar puncture. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit, uh, hit the bell notification. And... Uh, Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching and see you in the next uh, tutorial.